Good evening. Here we are. We're going to talk about how to graph simultaneously a position, velocity, and acceleration graph. So what we're looking to do here is in order to graph all three simultaneously, we need some very important information, some key information. And that is we need the max and min from the first derivative, and we need any points of inflection we might get from the second derivative. So here we go. So in combination, all three of those things plus the normal y value should help us graph all three of these simultaneously. We'll see something very interesting that pops up uh, when we graph each of them simultaneously. All right, so here we go. We have, let's see if I can get this to come over here a little bit more. All right, we've got uh, f of x is equal to negative 2x cubed plus 6x squared. And what we want to do first is if we, we know that f, f of 0, uh, that's a, a 0 point. Now, we'll get into the rest of this purple in a second. But one of the first things we want to do is find the first derivative. So we do that, negative 6x squared plus 12x. Why are we doing that? Because we want to know where the max and min points are, right? Those critical values to help us draw the graph. So once we factor out a negative 6x, we get x minus 2 equals 0. And we will see that at x equal 2 and at x equal 0, these are our critical values. And we will have maxes and minimums at those places. So then what we did here is we put the function values back in. So f of 0 is just 0 if we replace x with 0. If we replace x with 2, to get our y value, we'll get negative 2 times 2 cubed plus 6, uh, 2 squared, 6 times 2 squared. We get negative 16 plus 24, we get a positive 8. So that gives us our y value, x and y, x and y of our two critical points of this function. Then we can find, we set f double prime at, of x equal to 0 which we take the derivative of the first derivative. So bring the 2 down. That's negative 12x plus derivative of 12x is equal to just 12. We set that equal to 0, and we get x is equal to 1. All right. Well, now that we know that there is an inflection point, and an inflection point, if you don't recall, is where the concavity changes. It may go from positive to negative, but it's where the slope is going from something steep so now it's starting to narrow off and go down in the other direction. And as we'll see, that's a very key point along the way, collection point, as well as the max and min points. We plug in f of 1 back into the original function, and we get a y value of 4. Now, this will help us when we graph our position graph. So these two key points plus our inflection point will help us the initial position function. Let's see what we have for the initial position function. And that is, uh, we have our inflection point here at 1 comma 4. We've got a max at 2 and a min at 0, 0. So once we have this curve and we could find out where the other x-intercept is, and that was at x equal 3, then what we can do is come along and we can start our maximum here is at uh, 2 comma 8. Our point of inflection is here. Our x-intercept is there. And our minimum, we can show that our minimum is right here at 0, 0. So at 0, 0, we have a minimum. OK. Now, how does that translate to the velocity function? Well, remember the velocity function Whenever we have something above the x-axis, then what that means is that the, the derivative or the slope is positive. When we have something below the x-axis, then the slope is negative. So what I like to do is I like to just draw my dashed lines through these values all the way down. And we'll see how they match up Okay, to is another value all the way down through 2, straight down. And let's see how we can break this piece apart. If you'll notice, since this is the, this is the velocity function, this is a replication of the slope. 
So again, our slope is positive through two. Our slope is positive through two. Now remind yourself, this is not meaning this is a positive and negative slope. That will be that when we get to the inflection or the, uh, the acceleration graph. Right now, what we have to focus on is the graph is gradually getting steeper, gradually getting steeper. And then once we get to this inflection point, that's where concavity changes. And as concavity changes, the slope of the line is getting ever more so low. Again, the velocity graph represents the steepness of the slope. The higher the number here, the steeper the slope. So if we look at our ruler, as we come here, we are very steep. But as we start to approach 2, our, the steepness of the velocity function is getting lower and lower. And that's what's happening here. We're going super steep. And then once we get to this inflection point, then the slope starts to slowly decrease, decrease back to 0. And that's where we meet the maximum. And our maximum is where the derivative is equal to 0. So, and that makes sense that at 2, our derivative would cross the line at x equal 2. So, and again, now once we get past 2, the derivative or the slope of the line is negative. And this is where the slope is negative. Right? Slope is positive up here. Slope is negative down there. So uh, it, it, it works. Then the acceleration graph is, if we look at our point of inflection, right here we have a positive slope. And if you look here, the slope of this graph, we're looking from uh, 0 to 1, right? 0 to 1 of this graph now, the, the, this is the slope of this graph. So each, this is the slope of that graph. This is the slope of this, this graph. So we have a positive slope to 1. So we have a positive slope. Again, this is how steep the slope is. A positive above the x-axis, negative slope below the, the x-axis, negative slope. And at 1, again, we start to see that the graph changes from a positive slope to a more negative slope. And we see the same thing in our linear graph here, where the positive slope here. Now, again, all together, if you were to look, just look at this and pull this off some website as a graph, you'd say, oh, well, that's a negative slope. You're like, no, it's not. It's an acceleration graph. It, it reads totally different. So we have to be mindful that this is the positive sense, and this is the negative sense. And that's what happens after 1, is we go negative, and it goes negative. So we're in the negative values here. And as it goes down, the slope is getting more and more steep, which is more and more negative, which is true here because here we have zero slope there, right? Zero slope uh, hitting the x-axis there. And then as we start to curve down, the value of the slope gets more and more steep as it goes on to its progression. Anyway, uh, I know that's a lot. Uh, but what you got to do is go back through this video, re-review it, draw the lines out, and really think about what is happening with the position graph, the velocity graph, and the acceleration graph, and how they tie together to actually create quite a harmonious bit of mathematics uh, between the three functions and how you can view them and their relationship. All right? Anyway, thanks again. That is... Graphing, position, velocity, acceleration simultaneously. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon.